Hi, welcome to CCSK Domain 9. This domain is focused on incident response lifecycle in the information security program. There are four questions that we can expect from uh, this uh, domain in the exam. This video will help you to prepare for CCSK exam in the lesser effort and time. Watch till the end to avoid any misconception or any confusion. If you are watching my videos for the first time, please subscribe to the channel for the re regular videos updates. Before we deep dive into the incident response um, process, um, let's take a look on um, the event and incidents. Um, how can we define that? Any event uh, is any observable occurrence in the system or the network. There can be two different uh, events. One is the regular events and uh, any adverse events. So regular events are all normal activities um, that we do on the um, uh, computers. Adverse events could be malware, um, adverse traffic or tampering um, on the on your data or on your services. While on the incident side, any unplanned interruption to the IT services or a reduction in the quality of service is uh, an incident. Um, it is only adverse um, and kind of phishing attack, DOS, uh, DOS attacks, um, data breach is, um, is in the category of uh, the adverse uh, incidents. So all the incidents are events but not all events are um, incidents. So as I mentioned because events can be positive, can be negative. Um, so all, uh, all events cannot be incident because only adverse events are going to be incident. As part of the um, incident response life cycle, we have uh, four different phases, preparation, uh, detection and analysis, uh, containment, eradication and recovery, and uh, last is the postmortem. So the incident response is very important for any information security program in any organization. Most of the organizations have some sort of in, um, incident response plan to govern how they will investigate an attack. But as the cloud presents the distinct differences in both access to forensic data and the governance, the organization must consider how their incident response process will change in the cloud. We will see uh, in detail how uh, we can prepare for the incident response um, program. So first of all, if we begin with the preparation phase, uh, we need to define a process of uh, handling the incident um, response, who will be communicating and facilitating um, this process and what will be the team. Um, what uh, what is the hardware and software required to perform the uh, incident analysis um, internal documentation um, we need to document everything related to uh, all the ports that are open serving in the infrastructure all the services that are running inside uh, the infrastructure we need to identify the assets um, what, uh, and of course the classification of their assets, what is critical, what is not. And uh, we need to see the network architecture or the layout uh, of our internal infrastructure. Training identification um, for our people. Evaluation of infrastructure by scanning and monitoring, vulnerability assessment and assess the risks for um, uh, for the infrastructure. Subscription to the third party intelligence services. So if we do not have the internal expertise on um, threat intel then probably we will need to uh, see um, uh, that if we can subscribe to the third party uh, services for threat intel. So how it impacts um, in the cloud. So SLA and uh, the governance um, considerations any incident that is using public cloud or hosted provider um, that require an understanding of the service level agreements and likely the coordination with the cloud provider. Keep in mind that depending on your relationship with the um, provider, you may not have direct contact um, point 
and might be limited to um, whatever is offered through the standard support so it is uh, it has huge impact because it is not uh, like the same uh, that we have in um, traditional infrastructure uh, when we prepare for the um, incident response we we can have all the contact points all the escalation points but in the cloud um, it has dependency on the cloud provider and we need to carefully choose uh, and um, we need to uh, you know consider these aspects um, in the SLA and uh, the governance infrastructure as a service uh, platform as a service versus SaaS so in in uh, in SaaS um we 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 do not have much in control because most of the things are being managed by the cloud provider directly and uh, we are highly dependent on um, on the cloud provider uh, we still have some space in um, infrastructure as a service and something in uh, platform as a service which we can build uh, from the infra uh, from um, uh, incident response point of view cloud jump kit these are the tools that are needed to uh, investigate in a remote location especially um, for example when you have to collect the logs and uh, metadata for the forensics you need to see uh, that what is uh, the ability um, that we have and how we can obtain the different images um, and different stuff from the cloud uh, especially from, uh, uh, from from the cloud provider architect the cloud environment for faster detection investigation and response um, enable the instrumentation such as the cloud api um, and ensure that they feed to a secure location um, that's available to the investigators in case of any incident utilize the isolation to ensure that attacks cannot spread and compromise the entire application use immutable servers when possible um, implement application stack map to understand where the data is going to reside in order to factor in the geographic differences in terms of monitoring and data capture it can be very helpful to perform threat modeling and tabletop exercise to um, to determine the most effective mean of containment for the different type of attacks on the different components in the cloud stack this should all uh, include the differences between responses for uh, infrastructure as a service platform as a service and uh, software as a service detection and analysis phase alerts um, um, all the uh, network security monitoring host monitoring um other indicators of the compromise um, all the uh, event monitoring uh, we need to take care um, validate all the alerts and escalate so we especially here we need to uh, identify all the false positives and we need to uh, reduce them um, so that we are not uh, wasting our bandwidth or efforts in unnecessary um, uh, alerts estimate the scope of incident um, we need to estimate what is the parameter of our uh, incident that we are going to cover incident response um, yeah. assign uh, an incident manager who will coordinate the further actions it is important um, to assign an incident manager responsibility of communication designate a person who will uh, communicate the incident containment and recovery status to the higher management build a timeline of the attack uh, determine the extent of the personal data loss potential data loss uh, notification and coordination activities so all these things will fall under uh, detection and analysis phase uh, which we need to take care so how it impacts uh, in the cloud uh, basically um, the uh, some providers offers in cloud monitoring and alert tool that um, kick off the automated incident response activities and uh, the cloud platform uh, also offers the logging mechanisms uh, which can help to detect and analyze um, the incidents but you need to implement the api's logging when developing your own applications especially you cannot rely on the cloud provider in that case uh, data source uh, we need to see um, this is quite different from uh, traditional it by the way in terms of uh, how to collect the data uh, what all uh, methodologies that we need to consider while uh, collecting the data 
um, one challenge in collecting the information may be limited network visibility uh, network logs uh, from a cloud provider will tend to uh, uh, be flow records but not uh, the full packet captures forensic and uh, investigation investigative support um, always factor in what the cloud service provider can provide and uh, whether it meets the chain of custody requirements uh, not every incident will result in legal action but it is important to consider um, and to uh, take the legal team's view um, uh, from the perspective of chain of custody bit by bit copy may not be possible um, as you don't have the physical control over the physical resources so what we can do is snapshotting the uh, storage of virtual machines capturing any metadata at the time of alert so that the analysis can happen based on that um, if your provider supports it pausing the VM which will save the volatile memory state which will have to um, uh, you know uh, investigate uh, in forensics and uh, Containment in, and eradication and um, recovery. Um, containment, um, taking the system offline. Uh, considerations for the data loss versus service availability. Ensuring the system don't destroy themselves upon the detection. Eradication and recovery. Um, clean up the compromised devices and restore system to the normal operations. Confirm the systems are functioning properly. Um, deploy controls to prevent the system incidents document everything about the incident and gathering of the evidences especially from the perspective of chain of custody uh, cloud impact starting with the management uh, plane um, meta structure uh, it is very important um, to to protect and to keep that free um, you know free from uh, uh, the attackers this will open uh, involve invoking the break glass procedure um, for example um, just like when you break the glasses of uh, the the rack in a physical data center and you have access to the all the physical resources lying there similarly if you have root access or the the admin access to the resources which are there in the management plane it has the similar similar thing and it is very important to protect it from the attackers uh, more flexible um, this phase is more flexible in the cloud as the resources can be rebuilt quickly from the scratch thanks to um, software defined infrastructure service model for SaaS and some pass you uh, have to rely on the providers hence um, have some limitations here postmortem this is the last phase of uh, the incident response um, uh, phase um, we in this phase what we check is uh, what could have been done better could the attack have been detected sooner or what additional data would have been helpful to isolate the attack faster does the incident response process need to change if so then what can be done better so basically these these are the questions which we need to retrospect with the um, in incident response team uh, to improve the process and uh, yeah, for the continuous uh, improvement so how does it uh, impact uh, in terms of the cloud um, pay particular attention to the limitation in the data collected and uh, uh, figure out how to address the issues moving forward it is hard to change the SLAs um, especially if you find uh, uh, something uh, or some areas which requires the improvement it is really hard to um, you know uh, to change the SLA at that time but if you find any loophole or any uh, gaps which are not aligned with the SLAs previously ag agreed SLAs and uh, the contracts then of course this opens up the opportunity to renegotiate the um, uh, the the contracts and the SLA with the provider let's take a look on uh, some questions here which phase of the incident response life cycle is used to determine ways to improve the incident response process so i think this talks about uh, the improvement here um, the containment eradication uh, recovery it is not the area um, where we discuss about the improvement preparation is the first phase where we prepare for uh, the incident response detection and analysis is the second phase where we uh, prepare for 
uh, and and deploy the uh, the detection tools and uh, perform the analysis uh, in that post mortem is the phase when we talk about the improvement and we do the retrospect uh, with the team so this is the right answer uh, next is a customer should design the cloud environment in a way that optimizes the effectiveness of uh, incident response. This includes all of the following measures except um, use immutable servers if possible. Um, I, this is quite uh, in line with the cloud design. Enable API logging to an external uh, secure location. This is also in line as we discussed in the slides. Um, uh, ensure contract include a 100% uptime guarantee. Uh, I doubt here. Utilize isolation to limit the potential negative impact. Um, this is uh, this is where I think C is. Um, I never seen anything as part of the contract which is 100% uptime. So usually, what we talk about in the five nines uptime, uh, let's say 99.999. So this is the five nines, and uh, based on that, you may have seven nines or nine nines uptime but it is never been hundred percent so this is the uh, right answer here um, next is to add in uh, getting information about the potential attackers the cloud customer might consider um, sending undercover operatives into the non-attack hangout paying known attackers for insight into their operations uh, uh, offering a bounty to anyone who will attack the attacker, subscribing to an external threat intelligence service. So this is the thing I think we discussed in the preparation phase that if you do not have the internal expertise who can do uh, on the threat intel then uh, it is a good idea to subscribe for the external threat intelligence service. So this is the right answer here. Uh, next is in order to determine whether log data received from a cloud provider satisfies a chain of custody requirement, the security practitioners should consult their supervisors. Um, they cannot help with chain of custody. Senior management, they cannot. Um, attorneys. Uh, this is legal, yes, cloud providers, no. So I don't know, uh, I, I think chain of custody is pretty much, so this is the keyword here, chain of custody, because this is the legal uh, requirement and uh, can only be discussed or verified uh, with the help of attorneys. So it should always be discussed, uh, should always be consulted with the attorneys uh, here. Thanks for watching the full video. With this, we conclude CCSK Domain 9, Incident Response. Um, I hope you like the video. Please subscribe, like, comment and share in your network so that others can take the benefit. Thank you.